these the young folks today. Amen. The young folks today, they just are not like they lost their minds. I don't know what they got in But I've learned that the Lord used whosoever that will allow him to use them. Amen. Just because I can't. And I say, let the Lord use you to give him free, to give him worship. You know how it comes out. Amen? Let the Lord use you. Don't let nobody restrain you from worship and praising the Lord. Whether it is a wrong or a jump, or whether it's a hand clap or, or a quad prayer. However it's done, let it be unto the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. And only somebody got something to say about it is the enemy. And we don't care what he says. No. We love to make him mad. Amen. 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 There's a word that is found in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, that third through the fifth verse. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. I'm not going to hold you too long today, amen. That's okay. But just for a little while. I can lift up and hear the scripture of 2 Corinthians 10 chapter 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. But the weapon of our warfare are not corrupt but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. But bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. See Amen. our text come from the fourth verse for the weapon of our warfare are not strong but mighty through God for the putting down of strong hope and we like to use as a call today true war of war true war of the cross. We may say that we are warriors of the cross, but are we true warriors? Are you praying with me? Okay. Warriors are soldiers. Amen? But soldiers aren't necessarily warriors. Warriors know how to weather the storm. Warriors walk in victory. Warriors are overcomers. Warriors do not wait to see if they are overcomers or if they have the victory. Warriors just walk in it. Amen? For the weapon of our warfare not carnal, but mighty through God 
to the pulling down of strongholds. It's not our strength, our nor our wisdom that help us to be victorious in this battle, Amen. in this war that we need. Yeah. But it, it is a strength, a weapon that's not on this world. In these few verses, Paul, he does not list the weapon, but he says spiritual warfare means that we have a spiritual enemy. Are you ready with me? Therefore, our, our spiritual enemy requires spiritual weapon. Uh, we are told that we have some weapons, and our weapons are mighty. Isn't that good news? Our weapons are effective. Are you able to identify those spiritual weapons which we need today? Our first weapon that the Lord has given us is the Word of God. The Word of God. We need to have confidence and faith in the Word of God. For the Word declares that His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The Word declares that in the beginning God created. So therefore, before there was a beginning, there were God. He created the heavens and the earth. The Word declares that in the beginning the Word to trust in God. 
to take him at his word. As he so in many different ways get us or try to show us that it is in his word that makes us. It is his word that, 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 we, that we are taught by. How to live, how to serve him, how to uh, receive the blessings that he has in store for us. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. I to lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct
Another weapon of our warfare is prayer. Now, it is true that there is very little about prayer in this particular book uh, of Corinthians. But however, Apostle Paul, he certainly believed in prayer. But in the book of Ephesians, he lists this as one of the office weapons. But it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So according to Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, that God's mighty weapon of faith, truth, righteousness, the gospel message, and the word of God. Mm -hmm. If we don't study the word of God, we won't be able to use the weapon. Yeah. If we only depend on a Sunday, and a Sunday, and a Sunday, to get equipped in the Word, then we'll be poorly equipped. If we only come and try to find out how to fight when we are in the battle, it may be a little too late. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit equips us for the struggles, but He provides the weapons we need in the battle. But take a look at what's happening in the world. To look at the worldly weapons. Right. The worldly weapons, wealth, fame, lies, deceit, selfishness, crookedness. And it may weigh you some power on this earth. It may help you just to get by for a time. But they are useless in a spiritual battle. The devil's stronghold includes every proud argument that keeps people from knowing God and rebelling his ideas. The word, the, the devil's weapon is tied up and centered around selfishness. Me, myself, and I. The devil's warfare it pulls our mind to think in the natural rather than in the supernatural. The world of ideals is the real battleground for God and the devil. But the word says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, boy, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, yes, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. And then it goes on to say, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Renewing of a mind is not a one time thing, yeah. it is a And what's not true 
covering yes. of the foot. And it's typically made of leather mm -hmm. with a sturdy sole mm -hmm. and not reaching above the ankle. All right. Had to be a good sole yeah. because sometimes in the simple ball, put it on brakes. Yes. Sometimes you need to know when to put on brakes. Yeah. When to go and when not to go forward. Yeah. Sometimes you need to know when to stand still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
true warrior. True warrior of the cross. Yeah. Anybody want to be more like Christ? We have, we have been empowered. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. Yeah. To be like Christ. That's what he called him. He called him to say. He said, I'll crucify with you. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lived. Yeah. 